Hi, Misha here, and several asked. It's taken us a little time to get one in hand, but we're going to finally do a full range review on the somewhat new, new version of Serbian Zastava Arms M77PS. I almost want to call this a Gen 2 because we had a M77PS years ago from Century, back around 2014, 2015. But um, for the last year or so, Zastava USA has been offering this gun here. This is a true import as such. And is essentially a civilian version of the M77B1 military rifle. It's chambered for 7.62 NATO, 308. They have both calibers on the website, don't at me. It has roughly a 20 inch barrel, just a hair under, called hammer forged. Something new for this version, compared to the original M77 PS, it's a chrome lined bore. The original version did not, either the military or the original import. It is threaded half, excuse me, is threaded 14 by one left hand, standard AK. It comes with a removable slant brake. Pretty standard front sight there. We have an adjustable gas system with three positions for different ammo types, maybe suppressed too, some say. We have these uh, polymer handguards, very M70 inspired. Standard 800 meter iron sight. Standard Sestava Serbian variant of the Warsaw Pact rail. This is on a 1.5 millimeter stamped receiver with the bulge front trunnion. And back here we have another difference from the original. The one Sentry brought in had a little kind of half moon cutout down here. This one, as you see, is an actual square back receiver, complete with a little spring loaded thing. So it takes pistol grip and standard butt stock. So this one is brand new, hence the boot on there. Pull her off. And the chamber flag, which is actually very hard to get off on camera. Oh, flag meaning a, a, a zip tie. I didn't actually notice that before. And there we go. So it does have the bolt hole open notch safety. One thing I do find interesting and is a little bit unique for Yugo slash Serbian pattern, these magazines do not have the last round follower. They are metal and they hold 20 rounds. The original imports came with either a 10 or even maybe a five round mag. So it's nice that these do accept the standard M77B1. The stock, pretty modern style, and it is adjustable with a few positions. The cheek riser here. And we do have a kind of little oversized pistol grip with storage compartment. And that trigger is pretty decent. So with that, let's cut over to the range and look at our first shots out of this new gun. M77, very first shot. For a minute there, I thought you were shooting a 308. Oh. For a minute. Wait. Second mag through it by Fox. Dude, what a dream. Well, it went fantastic, I'm sure. Actually, I don't know because I'm back in the past here at the table, but yeah. Assuming it did, I wouldn't be surprised. Again, imported heavy duty receiver, medium heavy barrel, new chrome lining, good stuff. And we actually did pick up multiple mags for this in case we had a bad mag from the factory. When they ship in the box, you just pretty much get paperwork, manual, and one of these metal mags. But that's okay. The original M77B1 
This is actually a takeoff from this gun here, which, yes, I know, we still need to do a shooting review of one day. This is the M76. This was Yugoslavia, later Serbia's, DMR, their equivalent to the PSL, although a little bit more of a battle rifle, but it was select fire. Oh, excuse me, it's semi-auto and, and safe only, not select fire. And interestingly, these were not in 762 by 54R, as you might think, but in 8mm Mauser, 7.92, because that's what Yugoslavia used. We have a somewhat longer barrel, about 22 inches. We have an interesting fixed flash adder with interrupted threads for a suppressor. We, again, have an adjustable gas system. This is a non-chrome-lined, but cold hammer forged barrel. Pretty standard handguards, standard 800 meter iron sights, and these were originally on milled receivers. And the first M77s were too, including having the same style furniture with this oversized pistol grip and this kind of uh, semi pistol grip rear stock with a Yugo butt pad. So your early M77B1s look like this guy. Later on though, they would go to this stamped receiver and eventually switch over to polymer furniture. Also, some of the early ones had flip-up grenade sights because these were built more for export. They were also built to be more like a battle rifle, like a G3 or FAL. So as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, the military version is actually select fire, or at least most of them were. So while it could be used as a DMR, the 7.62 NATO variant was for export primarily which makes sense because they were getting into uh, 556 Kalashnikovs like the M80 and later M90 as well. But that said, some of these, because they were in country, did see issuance and use during the Yugoslavian uh, civil wars as the country broke apart in the 90s. So there is a, a military heritage there. But a gun like this with the polymer furniture is definitely a 21st century variant. Now this isn't what Yugoslavia's, oh excuse me, uh, Serbia went with. Instead they went with the M91, which is more like a PSL, and it is actually in 762 by 54 r which is an interesting choice for the country, but logistically it does make sense for them, at least they thought so. With that, yeah, let's go back over to the range. M77. You go smoke. Bulls are burning. These M76s are nice. See that manual last round held open, but when you pull the mag out, boom, and you get a cat. Every time you pull a mag out, you get a cat. Very smooth because of the machined receiver. A little bit heavier. These are about 10.5 pounds, whereas the M77 stamps about 9.5 pounds. Again, both without optics on. Typically a four power scope would be used, sometimes an eight. Century sold some kit builds, M76s with US receivers and barrels, but there's only been a few true imports. There were a few pre-bands and a few of the post-band kind of cotton customs era. And there were some brought over in the late 90s that were, had, had to be recalled because of a certain third hole they shouldn't have had even though they were only some auto. What do you do? But with these, we have had a few versions. We've already done a video on the M91, like I told you, which is on a similar stamped receiver, but in the other caliber with a longer barrel. The original Century guns were not very successful. Part of it was the small magazine, part of it was the slant cut receiver, and part of it was it was just Century Arms. But I will say they were inexpensive. At times they were as cheap as 600 bucks brand new from Century. But that was mostly because they weren't selling. Regularly, they were seven or eight. As far as this, the M91 with a scope, I think they, when I got mine, they were about three. They might be more now. This gun is around 12, 1300. No scope, one mag. Still, less than half the price of the M91. 
same good build quality. And pretty much in every way, I like it more than the M91. The M91 to me was a nice enough gun, but it was kind of trying to out PSL the PSL and more money and I don't know, maybe I just wasn't in the market for another 54R. But this being in 762 NATO 308, it's kind of nice. And the fact that it is more of a battle rifle style. Perfectly good machined military type trigger. Well, with that, let's cut over to the range one more time for some final shots and final thoughts. Continuing on with the M77, Fox is going to try Silver Bear 308. Silver Bear. Silver Bear. This thing is very accurate. like a top router. So the M77 PS here uh, continue to run well for us. This, uh, I do like this adjustable stock. It's uh, interesting it's how you get it, it's a but I found the, uh, it's very, actually very tight and it, it did not really loosen up with shooting. And I, I think we both have commented, we really dig these mags, they're cool. Yeah, they are cool. And they're heavy duty. Like, yeah. I feel like I could run that over a few times. It really reminds me of the old school Galil oh. 308 mags or maybe even the Valmets. I just, I like it that they're metal mags. You mm -hmm. don't, just don't see that anymore. And they load in. It's a little awkward, but. Not bad. No, it's not, no, not, hey, I'm an idiot and I was able to get yeah. it pretty good. Yeah, they go on pretty good. We actually had a total of five mags just in case and that way we could have ammo loaded up. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. We really didn't have any failures to speak of, except one I'll talk about in a minute. I will say the slant break is not doing this gun any favors. No. Um, I'd like to show my shoulder. I'm pretty perfect. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's better than nothing, but that, that desperately needs an actual muzzle break. Mm -hmm. And I think that would really, but it wasn't bad for a 308. Oh no, I mean, we rapid fired it multiple yeah. times and it was it wasn't bad. Accurate. No, no. And it's not heavy. It's it, it for as light of 308 as it is. You're right. Yeah. But we learned on that uh, Swiss uh, 751 video when we shot the Sapper without, with just a birdcage and then we shot the, the SOCOM with an actual break, it made the world the difference with 308, especially short barrel through it. Now that's a nearly 20 inch barrel, so mm -hmm. it's. Plenty long for 308, but not any extra. Yeah. I mean, it, I kind of go back to like Crocodile Dundee. Remember whenever uh, the dude pulls a little knife out and then Dundee pulls out the big knife, like, that's not a knife, this is a knife. That's kind of the same thing with this gun. I mean, like. Can I say that, that's not a knife, that's a gun. Well, I know, but it's like, this is a gun. <laughs> There's something about it. It's big, it's heavy, but not heavy enough to where you don't want to shoot it. Yeah, like. it's. I, you you know you want to pigeonhole it as a DMR kind of like the PSL right. or the or the M76, I get that, but it also kind of has a battle rifle feel like a G3 or an FAL. Yeah, I mean especially for the price. I mean what for what the FAL costs versus one of these. I mean I would after shooting it today I would. Yeah, I, I, I think I, mean, I don't know. I think retail on them is right now roughly thirteen hundred. Yeah, but it, I, it it has that feel. I mean that's a perfect yeah. way to put it. Kind of the glill, the old school uh, three hundred eight big hardy round i will say it took me a little while to um sorry i got grease on my nose but it took me a little while to get used to the stock um collapsing back because <laughs> the cheek cover here you want to naturally grab it and pull that back uh-huh yeah it. i know you saw even now even though i know it's it, it's no matter how many times i did it today same thing yeah i guess they did it so that doesn't move so it's steady it, it, that way you can for your arms yeah it, it makes sense, but yeah, it would just be bit. something to train with and get a little more used to. But. Yeah, it's not something, but you're, you, it's a 308, you're not going to wrap it. But now, you, know, you were saying the iron sights were pretty dead hey, on, too. It was really accurate, especially for me not really trying to stay on target. Um, 
yeah, I mean, I set three Coke bottles out there and hit them each time, no problem, never even, I mean, it took 10 shots running through it with the iron side set, what they were out of the box to figure out where to put it. And I mean, yeah, really accurate. And it was fun to shoot. And like I said, there was never any point like kind of in the shotgun where you're like, oh man, I want to take a break. This was like, yeah, hand me another mag. Uh, like I said, I think with a good Yeah, four, four or 308, there. it's quite it's not, nice. It's not your grandpa's hunting rifle. Although well, although you were talking about making yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, and I'll show for the channel too. This is definitely going to get a good rail and some sort of nice optic to reach out, you know, yeah. 150, 200 yards and I'll share it and show it then. But And I would like to replace the uh, the polymer lower hand guard. In the future. Yeah, I, I like it's the just, wood look. Yeah, it just looks, good. looks nice. But, uh, but that is a good stock. I, I was comfortable. Oh, it is comfortable. And there's something added to it here camera I know will pick up on your closer stuff, but it just flares out just enough and down where my hand never started slipping off of it. Mm -mm. Even with gloves on, it never felt where, hey, I don't like this. The, the furniture, while well, it's bottom, it is, it is well, and compared to the original Century M77 mm -hmm. PS, it loads better. Yeah. That, 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 that thumb hole stock they had, the hand guards in, I like this, and I, and I actually, it has QD sling sockets on the back, if you notice. Yeah, it's got two. Yep, got so. one up close to the front of the stock here, and one towards the back. So. Yeah, and on the other side too, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both sides. So. Yeah, and as far as the build quality, if you know a Zestava ZPAP, it's if you like that build quality, this is the same, the same blue. They're very uniform. They are uniform. Let me check it out. And look yeah. at the rivets here. It's just something about the Zestava, and and I mean, you know, everything's subject to have your mind changed. It's but. got the spring loaded. We already talked about that earlier. I have not been burned by Zestava yet on uh, some quality and fit and finish. The rivets are very, I mean, they're not perfect. There's a little bit of dimpling, but that's that's a military rivet. They're they're holding. I mean, we ran over 100 rounds through just today. Hey, it's 308, guys. You know what it costs, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, the rivets are, are military-grade rivets, but the main thing is they, they held. And, of course, we have the thick receiver and all that, but that's what Zestava is known for relatively Relatively balanced. One thing I'll say, it's got a good balance. It has a really good balance. I think it goes back to like that battle rifle. I haven't picked up too many battle rifles that just feel like they're really yeah. unbalanced. But this is impressive, which I've been super excited about getting my hands on one of these for months now since like, yeah. summer. And it was kind of a little better than I expected, I think. Well, one nice thing is a lot of guns like this, they're meant to run with an optic, and the iron sights sure. are literally an afterthought. Mm -hmm. This seems like the iron sights, while they're there, are actually practical. Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, no. Yeah. It, no? No. No, no problem <laughs> keeping it on target. Yeah, I mean, I, a scope would be better for sure, and we will. Well, let's uh, cut back to some range footage, and I will talk about a couple of issues we had, but they were pretty minor. Yeah. Pop them out there. Hi, guys. He's running. We need that back remote. Here. M77 again. <laughs> First, uh, something. Let's see. It didn't go all the way forward. It's like the bolt needs to be yeah. pushed up. Let's pull that out. Okay. Let's see what we got in here. It's actually jammed up a little bit. Probably just rim stuck. Put it in the pocket. That was a failure to extract an empty. Let's see if we can finish up this mag. Booyah. All right, so we had one failure, sort of. The bolt was coming back here, not coming back further, and I had a suspicion. Rubber mallet, it's always your friend. It was a, a, a spent casing. It was Red Army Standard, and the, the rim kind of just ripped away. So it was having a hard time extracting from the chamber. Once we hit it with the rubber mallet, it came right out. So failure to eject. I'm going to provisionally say it was the ammo. I definitely don't say it was the ammo. The only other issue we experienced was with the fifth mag. It was loose, but we the catch was kind of stuck, not wanting to go forward. All I had to do there was just kind of wrap my finger in something and press it. So the one mag was stiff coming out. That could have been the fact that these are all brand spanking new mags. Well, and it was loose in the beginning. We did notice that when we put it in. It was just a little loose, but it seemed so to... that Yeah, because it seemed like this didn't want to quite 
pivot. Once we got to pivot forward, the mag popped right out. Mm -hmm. And as you saw, the mags are a little, you got them to get them seated right. But once you do. It's a little unique setting in there. Yeah. But once, once you there have you it go. You see that there's kind of a click point where you got to push. And this might even be that one mag that was being janky. Right. But I, I think these do come in single stack or otherwise when they have to modify them. So it may just be a little leftover material. But go. that should, yeah, a little oh, force. Marianne. Should wear in just fine, and that's only noticed with that one mag. It was one mag, yeah. So, the slap chop. Oh, here's that uh, hold open safety thing we talked yeah, let's about. Just that. See what you got. Yeah, on, on a 308. Uh huh. Hmm? Hey, it's because the camera's rolling. Jank it around a little bit. All right. Yeah. You win. Yeah, this, this is Stava. At least they're they're the ones who actually came up with this pattern. So with, with the safety. Hold yeah, with the I still don't. And what's interesting about this, as I said earlier, it's the one Zastava I can think of that doesn't have the bolt hold open follower mag, which I'm fine with. Yeah. See? Yeah. No, uh... What do you think of the trigger? I liked the trigger. Yeah. It wasn't a... And, yeah. I mean, I shoot more Zastavas than I do any AKs, so, honestly, it's comparable to their other triggers. Yeah, it didn't strike me as... No. Amazing, but not... Just I liked it better than the Pioneer just because it was... It's so, a little smoother. Yeah, the Pioneer had a grit in it. That yeah, not bad. Just Not bad, but it's it registers. But yeah, no, I liked the trigger a whole lot, and everything held up very nice and tight. And, I mean, nothing stood out to me that would be of not quality, especially at its price point. I think being able to get a Battle Rifle 308 at, at the cost of these is it's a really good deal, especially having an import. This is go. maybe the, the again, provisionally, the best 308 value I can think of since the Galil Ace 308. Yeah. I always thought that Galil Ace rifle, especially 308, for what they cost and what you got a machined receiver was a great deal. Because they were well under 2,000 mm -hmm. when the scars and everything else were well over. And it's a, it's an IW, it's an Israeli, they work well. And same with Sestava, this is a gun that's, been manufactured at least in some form since the late 70s, although this is a much updated version. But well, they proved their, their worth and that mm -hmm. they build a good quality rifle. Um, but I, I do remember the first time I called and was, I want a 308, 308. And you mentioned the Galil. Yeah. Since I love Galils, but that does this, I keep going back, this gun has that feel. It has kind of that old school battle rifle, but. I think with some wood on it, it'll really pop. Me too. That's what. Matter of fact, I've got. I, I say like a, a a Yugo birdcage flash hider, mm -hmm. and some uh, M seventy six style wood yeah. with the big fat pistol grip. Yep. That and the the twenty round mag. I think it'll look pretty. I don't pretty hate good. these kind of TD and these US Palm grips. No, I don't hate them for no. for working. Especially they work great. The Just, it's yeah. a more of a looks it thing. It is, and I wish, which you can always get custom wood cutouts, but. I kind of wish there was a old school style of uh, bake lot mag like the, or uh, <laughs> grip like these. Oh, grip? Yeah, that was an original. Oh, you know, oh yeah, yeah. fat. Come back yeah. like some of the Chinese, but bigger. Because exactly, some of the Chinese yeah. are like the swoopy grips. Because mm -hmm. yeah, the Polish yeah, fatty is a little too small for my. Well, and it doesn't have the swoopiness. No, I've always. I know what you mean. These. Yeah, bake lot's popular. I like but it. no. Uh, Again, this being a heavy caliber gun and us not having an optic today and the rain moving in, this day was just more or less function checking. Mm -hmm. And we did try a few different types. We had some uh, military surplus ammo. We had some Red Army. We had some Silver Bear. Aside from the one Red Army we already talked about, it, it ran fine. Yeah. And uh, we didn't adjust the gas setting one way or the other. Maybe we should have, but I don't know. It worked. I mean, it never really gave us a reason to other than that one... I just consider that a battery. I figure whatever setting they put it on when they shipped it was what they did, they didn't mind with us using. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah, yeah I, I'm definitely get a good optic mount on here and take it out into the woods and do some more long distance. We'll get it out in the. Big I thought, black field. You know, it's still deer season through Christmas. You can yeah. go, go. We'll definitely go hunting with it. Yeah, we'll get one with it next week or two. As I said at the beginning, I would be pretty surprised if it was a complete pile. Because the Zastavas, if nothing else, do work. They they might have other issues to people, but I really think Zastava USA has truly upped the game in mm -hmm. the last couple Definitely. of years. And for example, going to Chrome Line Bores, I pe people want that. So why exactly did 
they not have Chrome on board? That's a, that's a question that goes back to the ages, honestly. Okay. Um, some people used to say this because they didn't have Chromium. That doesn't seem to be true. I think it might have been an attempt for accuracy because you know, when you Chrome, you do you get better, better barrel life, but you do negatively Take impact away. accuracy. Another thing, too, is Yugoslavia, unlike the rest of the Warsaw, well, they're not Warsaw, but when anyone asks me, like the rest of the communist world, the rest of the communist world used steel case for the most part. Yugoslavia used brass case ammo. So I wonder if they felt like because they were using brass case, they did not need to chrome. Yeah, that's a really good theory. No one knows for sure, but that's, I think it's that. I know Steyr for a long time resisted chroming their FALs. Okay. At least they would chrome the chamber for extraction, but not the full bore. And to, and to be fair, Steyr FAL barrels are reputed to be the most accurate. I'm not sure how much of that's true, but that's the reputation they have. Hmm. Yeah. Good to know. But yeah, just like with the Pioneer gun, I'll be leaving this with him. He did the paperwork, so all nice and legal. And he will not so much be doing a longevity test with this one because, again, 308 ammo, but he'll be scoping it, trying it at distance, and uh, reporting back between now, Thanksgiving, and Christmas how, uh, how it does, see how it holds up over time. Yeah, most definitely. We'll uh, get some good range footage and take it out to some distant shots and get it zeroed in and yeah. take it hunting. I just noticed, I'm sure you know this too, but while I was finagling with it, I haven't just got to sit down and play with it because as always, when Misha brings a gun down, he tells me not to open them up and play with it. But it really, first does, impressions. It really does give an authentic first impressions. And as always, I'm kind of an idiot, so it takes me a while to get used to handling these. But if you notice here on the cheek rising pad, mm -hmm. you felt that, how it rises up and down? It's got a button over here. So, um, yeah, I'm not surprised. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's see, uh, lowers and in, it's pretty all cool. the way up. <laughs> yeah, well, I was doing that. Just I know, yeah. but yeah, these just this one just came in not long before I came down for the holiday anyway. But yeah, so I didn't have a whole lot of time to dink with it either. But what's nice is they they're very consistent. Zostava guns, they're that they have a pattern. It works. Be it 223, 7639, 308. Even their eight mils are pretty similar. Yeah, definitely. That's what keeps me buying the Stavas. But, uh, yeah, I'm really happy that someone, because the, the Century M77 PS had so much potential, but it wasn't there and it was Century. I'm hope, I'm happy that the Stava USA took that and turned it into the gun it always mm -hmm. could have been. In fact, I had a friend out in Albuquerque. He took one of the M77 PSs and, and rebuilt Like He actually made a piece for the rear and re-welded it so a regular stock would fit and... And it was one of his, he was a really good shot. He could pull off some trick shots with AKs, six, seven hundred yards. Oh, wow. And uh, so he reworked one of the M77s that Century did. It took him a lot of time and effort, mm -hmm. but he, he really tuned that thing to sing. Cool. So this reminds me of his gun. Kind of kind of what he had to be yeah, to get this. He had to spend, he got, he got that gun cheap, like 600 yeah. but he definitely put more than $600 um, of time and parts in it. Yeah, yeah, because welding, yeah. Versus us millennials can just go out and enjoy buying one of these right off the you shelf. You damn millennials. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? We've had this discussion on bullpups. You know, Misha has such a better uh, appreciation for some of the bullpups because he grew up with the tactical tuna. And when, maybe for Christmas we're going to get some boomers here because I'm Gen X, you're a millennial. We, we can get... Uh, some Gen Z. We'll, we'll just, just have a, do all, all four Gens. Yeah, one, one full table talk. Bonus points if we get Pop out here. That is a good one. But what we should the, really the do greatest generations take on AKs. <sighs> Leave me alone. Leave me alone. And ask questions without the others hearing and comparing answers. Yeah, he he drove me to that uh, HK place, uh, Fed Arms, years ago over there. Yeah. And he he was actually there when we were shooting like a G thirty six machine gun. He could care less. Sat in the car. And Absolutely didn't care. He, he visited paper. with the guys there. Yeah. But yeah it's, he visited with anybody. Yeah. He's like us. All righty, guys. Well, that's our preliminary review on the uh, M77 PS and 762 by 51. Yes, it also says 308. Don't at me. That's what the gun says. That's what the manual says. So presumably 762 NATO or 308 Winchester will work. Any final thoughts? Any last things? Final thoughts. I'm glad to have it. Look forward to shooting it. Yep. Thanks, Zastava, for giving me a 308. Alrighty, guys. I'll take that back. Yeah. Turn it over. As usual, if you could, please do like, share, and subscribe, especially during the holiday season. And uh, if you'd like to really help us 
get out and shoot more and have gas and all that good stuff, check out the link to the Patreon page and we'll try to grab some more guns. These are all I just, you know, bought through the store. They're not T&E guns because we want to be able to give a sincere impression. But so far, so good. So it was kind of a boringly reliable day all around. It was. My mm -hmm. shoulder's sore. Can't imagine. I think it's all the 12 gauge. For sure. But that's a story for another video. Yeah, we'll set that. Alrighty, guys. This is Misha. This is Fox. Catch you very soon next time. Now he's going to run again. Oh, I tripped. Oh, oh, oh.